In this video I'm going to show you how to use the City and Guilds online exam system and also show you where you can go to have a little play around with this yourself just to make sure that you're fully prepared for your exam. So in the video description we do have a link to the City and Guilds website. You can access that yourselves uh, via the link I've just provided if you want to come on here and have a go and play around with it yourself. But essentially what I'm going to be doing today is just showing you how to access the um, testing familiarization tool so practice tools basically so click on the link ring into this website scroll down towards the bottom you'll see level two and then you can see there's a master familiarization test and then there's an actual mock exam there as well so uh, we're going to be using both of those because the actual mock exam doesn't have scatter graphs in it uh, but it, we are going to use it for the drawing tool and that's the only two things i'm going to be focusing on today scatter graphs and, and drawing tool because everything else, if I'm honest, is fairly self-explanatory. And things like bar charts, pie charts, we tend to have those at level one rather than level two. So I'm not going to be covering those today either. Okay, so we're going to be starting off with the scatter graph. Now, as I've already mentioned, the mock exam that we do have provided by Seton Gills doesn't have a scatter graph in it. So um, you wouldn't be able to practice making scatter graphs with that one so I've had to find an actual question for us to use just for a bit of context for, for demonstrating this so this has just come from a City and Guilds paper exam so it says a vet nurse in a pet rescue centre records weights and ages of kittens brought to the centre in this table we can see all the information for the kittens so we've got kitten one over here uh, 600 grams and wet is 50 days old and so on and so on so these are all different kittens one day the center receives an abandoned kitten it weighs 460 grams the nurse needs to estimate the age of the kitten draw a suitable graph and trend line estimate the age of the abandoned kitten and show on the graph how you made your estimation so essentially we need to put all this information from the table into our graph now the graph tool itself is it's a little bit fiddly if i'm honest it's not as it's not great i'll put it that way uh, because ordinarily when you're doing this let's say for our axes so we're going to do the weight up on the left uh, for the vertical axes the age along the bottom for the horizontal axes for the weight we can see the biggest kitten we've got here is 720 grams so it would make sense to go from zero to 800 for our labeling if you like for the axes now the you can't actually alter how big these axes are you have to mess around with the squares within the little tiny squares we've got to mess around with those basically within the bigger squares so we can't just go up in multiples of 100 like we'd like to let's start with that then so we want to go up to 800 on the vertical axis we want to go to 60 on the horizontal because our oldest kitten is 56 so the, the heaviest and oldest kitten it's uh, 720 grams and 56 days old so it makes sense if we just go to 860 for our um, axes so if we click on the little graph tool here you'll see we've got these few options so we've got axis scale axis divisions grid divisions you don't really need to worry about the axis divisions much if i'm honest but just focus on the scale and the grid divisions i would suggest uh, so for the axis scale uh, now this is annoying because it's given as like a one but we could see on the actual graph itself it went up to 10 that's because these are in multiples of 10 so if you want 60 you're gonna have to put six as your horizontal value and because we want eight uh, 800 for our vertical we're gonna have to put 80 in there don't ask me why it's a bit of a silly thing I think they need to get it fixed really uh, just because that's confusing but yeah, they go up in multiples to 10. So do, do be aware of that. So if we come off there now, you'll see that our axes are now going up to 800 and across to 60. So we've got it set up how we want to, which is great. Now, looking at those, you generally think you want those to be going up as, uh, if we look at the weight, it's going to be going 20, 40, 60, 80, 20, 40, 60, 80. So we're going up in like multiples of 20. Um, and across the bottom, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so on and so on. Now, the problem with that is we've got um, five by five little tiny squares within these squares. So if we look at these, if I zoom in using the zoom in buttons, we can see we've got five little squares across and five little squares down. Um, generally, you would want to be using these little tiny squares to help identify where 20 would be, for example, or where you know, 40 would be, so the next one up. 
Uh, but because of that, how it works, it's a little bit awkward. So if we zoom in down the bottom here, uh, it's not going to go 20, 40, 60, 80, because 80 is up there. So it, there's too many squares. And across the bottom, 2, 4, 6, we've actually got 5 squares instead of 3. So that's what you would change on the graph settings. So where it says grid divisions, so we know for the horizontal across the bottom for the days, we want three little squares, so two, four, six. And then for the vertical, we're going to want four, so 20, 40, 60, 80. So I'm going to change those to three and four. And now we can see that that's set up properly. So we can see along the bottom here, we've got two, uh, four, six, and then 20, 40, 60, 80. So with this, you don't actually change your lines to make it so you can go up in multiples of um, 100 rather than 80s. You have to change the, the little squares within, which is very annoying, to be honest. Not the most helpful thing. But we've got it set up um, like so. So it's looking pretty good at this point. So now we've got it like that, we can um, start adding our plots on. Uh, well, we will need to add a, our labels on first, actually. Let's do that first. Uh, we'll add our labels on. So we need to label our axes. So we've got a weight axis. Now, all of your labels, like I can see you put it in a bit of a dodgy position. We can just grab it, sort of click and hold, and you can move it around. So we'll just pop it in the middle of the chart there at the top, like so. Might even want to make it a little bit further up if you wanted to. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's what we're, how we're looking at the moment. We've got our uh, axes labels. We've got our title. The grid set up properly. Uh, all we've got to do now is start adding in our um, kittens onto the graph. So if we look at, uh, we'll look over at this uh, left hand side. We've got a kitten that weighs 600 grams and it's 50 days old. So if you click on the little cross the, where it says point, that's your plot points. So we need to find 600 grams on here. So we're at 560 there, 580, 600 will be there. We need to go across to where 50 would be. So that thick line there is 48. So it's the next little one over. And where it puts the uh, plot point is right at the very tip of your cursor, like so. So that one's now going over from 600 to 50, like so. We'll repeat that process for all the other ones and then I'll come back. Okay, so we've got all of the uh, plot points on the graph now. Now, if you do get one that's just slightly off, you can just click and hold on to it and you can move it around. So uh, you, you can just uh, adjust it if you need to, but all the plots are on the graph now. Uh, what we want to be doing next is adding the line of best fit. So if you click on the line uh, button, you've just got to click where you want it to start, click where you want it to finish, and it'll draw the line for you. Uh, you can alter that so if you click on the little anchor point here and hold it and you can move it around adjust it as much as you like so when you're doing the uh, line of best fit you generally want to go through uh, as many points as possible and have a, the same number on either side of the line just makes it as accurate as it can be uh, so we've got the line on there we've got the graph nicely set up so the next thing we want to be doing then is to mark where this abandoned kitten is so the abandoned kitten weighs 460 grams we want to show on the graph how we're going to do that you could probably just use the the uh, line tool again so it weighs 460 grams so we'll start off from there and we'll go across the line we'll just be in slightly uh, because if you click try clicking on the line it'll uh, actually uh, try to uh, select the line you've already got so we'll just go across and then same again with the other one we'll just go from the bottom click up to the walls uh, where we need it to go and then you can just drag that one up to them we can see that this abandoned kitten is 36 days old now the actual question wants you to convert it into weeks i'm not really bothered about doing that but you, you just divide it by seven so that's essentially how you do the scatter graph question on the computer using this exam system so do play around with it yourselves get familiar with it and do make sure that you're altering these little grid divisions because it'll make it uh, easier for you to um, plot your points basically okay so the next thing we're going to be looking at then is the drawing tool and we're actually using the actual mock exam uh, for this one which you can find on the city girls website uh, so 
I'm not going to go into too much detail with this question on how you would work things out. It's more about demonstrating the tools. But uh, gardener wants to build this greenhouse in the top right hand corner of the garden. Uh, so we've got the garden there, a little sketch, and we've got the dimensions for the greenhouse. She'll leave a 50 centimeter space between the greenhouse and the edge of the garden. Plot the scale plan of the garden showing the position of the greenhouse. Draw a scale plan, put the scale you've used on your plan. So basically what we're going to be doing with this one is uh, drawing this little garden uh, sketch to scale on our paper down at the bottom here. And then we've got to put the um, uh, greenhouse on there. But essentially what we want to be doing is using uh, two of these larger squares for every one meter. So with this one, that's five and a half meters. Uh, just times that by two, you've got 11. So we'll need 11 squares for that one. Uh, so basically just double all of these dimensions. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so we want to be able to draw lines. We need to make sure we've got 11 squares um, space. So um, what I'll do is I'll just select the line tool. I'll click in the corner where I want it to start. And then I'll hold and I'll drag it for 11 squares. So two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, 11 and pop it there. And that's all you've got to do for the line tool. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 11 down as well. So what I'm going to do here is you've got to really start off from the bottom. Uh, one, two, because if um, just to show you, because if you go over to there to try and click again from that corner, it, it just selects the line that's already there. So you've got to go from the bottom up to it. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's move that down a little bit hopefully get 11 now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 with the uh, line tool selected again we'll just drag from the bottom up to where it needs to be like so now it's just slightly uh, off so you can just grab and hold it and move it around slightly That'll do. The next one down was four meters, so we'll need eight squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll start off from there and draw away up to the top. Just make sure it's in line with everything. There we go. And then uh, we had two and a half along the bottom, so we'll need five squares along the bottom, like so. And then we can just adjust that one. So with the little anchor point there, when it's selected, you can just grab and hold that and just alter it where it, put it where it needs to be. And then for these other two measurements, it didn't actually give us any dimensions, but we can just link those up. So if we just click there to there, get that linked up. And then for this next one, or this final one, because we've got two existing lines at each end, we're gonna have to kind of go in between and then just uh, drag drag it manually, extend it manually if you like. So we'll click that anchor point and just drag it to where it needs to be. And then we'll do the same with that one, like so. So we've got the garden outline nicely drawn. Uh, we need to have the rectangle tool next, and we're going to use that for the uh, greenhouse. So the greenhouse, it needs to be four squares by five because we're just doubling those. And we need a 50 centimeter gap, which is just one square, basically. So we need a one square gap between the um, garden and the greenhouse. So select your uh, shapes tool. You can hide it and unhide it here. So I had it hidden, so I've just clicked on that again. All you do is just drag it in and you can see the rectangle itself is already measuring two by two. So just pop it where we want it to start. So if you just click and hold and you can drag it around. Uh, so we go four squares across, oops, I've gone too far. So you can just click on these little anchor points and you can move it and resize it to where you want it to be. Um, so we'll go there, is that five? And that's four down. So we'll just go one more down. And we've got our greenhouse in position. Just click off it and we can see that's uh, in position now. So. What you're also going to want to do with this one is just add labels. So we've, uh, you're going to want to put the uh, number of centimeters that are there. So we've got six centimeters. Uh, you can just click off and then you can click back onto it to move it around. 
click back there we had uh, eight centimeters double click over here 11 centimeters click over here that could be 11 centimeters as well one at the bottom is five centimeters and then the one at the side here is three so three centimeters and that's it uh, we'll label the dimensions for the greenhouse of so four centimeters five centimeters and then we'll just label the garden and we'll label the greenhouse as well now you can't click into the rectangle to add the label you've got to do it uh, separately and then just click off and then you can click back on and drag it to where it needs to be click and hold to drag it where it needs to be uh, last thing we need to do then with this one is just add the scale so we'll use a little line tool again and we'll just draw a line that measures one square and then we'll put the text tool underneath there just to label that one to 50 and then again we can just click off that just reposition that so it's there and that's it easy as that so it's actually quite easy to use this drawing tool uh, much easier than the graphs but that's it for this particular video if you found this useful do check out all the other math lessons we do have on the channel and i'll see you on the next one